Top Gloves Workers Dormitory in Klang, Selangor will be placed under the Enhanced Movement Control Order after a spike in the number of COVID-19 infections there. Senior Minister Security Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob says the movement restrictions will be in place for two weeks, from midnight tonight until the end of the month. It will affect over 13,000 workers, as well as almost 1,200 residents living in the surrounding areas, including Jalan Abadi 1A stroke KU8, Jalan Abadi 10A stroke KU8 and Jalan Abadi 1A. Ismail said the move will enable the health authorities to carry out screening on all individuals in the area after 215 COVID-19 positive cases were recorded there. For now, Top Gloves factories will remain open. However, it has been ordered to sanitise its facilities and conduct screening on all its factory workers as well as the other hostels that supply manpower to its plants. Top Glove has a total workforce of roughly 21,000 people. CGS CIMB estimated last week that 8,000 or 38% are based in Klang. Most Malaysians polled in a new survey said they're as worried about getting infected with COVID-19 through migrant workers as they are about losing their jobs as a result of the pandemic's impact. According to Think Tank Emmy researchers' survey, 8 out of 10 or 81% said they're concerned about the threat of infection through illegal immigrants. This concern is the second highest on the list of seven pandemic-related worries measured in the survey. Job loss tops the list with 85% voted by respondents. The third biggest concern among Malaysians is the quality of education during the outbreak with 80% of respondents worried about students relying on online education due to the lack of internet access and broadband facility at home. 80% of respondents are worried about insufficient income and 75% about the quality of healthcare due to the pandemic. 7 out of 10 respondents are concerned about mental health and the waiting time to see a doctor. Malaysia has recorded 48,520 COVID-19 cases so far. The Health Ministry said 1,103 new infections were reported today, with 544 or nearly half originating from the Klang Valley. There were 821 recoveries and 4 new deaths. Payment Solutions Provider Revenue Group says its subsidiary Revenue Secure has bagged a contract to develop and implement the MyDebit Tokenization Platform for Payments Network Malaysia or PayNet, the national payment network and central infrastructure for the country's financial markets. In a statement today, Revenue MD and CEO Dato Edi Ng said the platform will be integrated with and used by more than 30 banks throughout Malaysia upon completion. He explained that the company is building a crucial component in the payment ecosystem for PayNet that will enable all my debit card holders to be able to use the card securely for online payments. According to Revenue, tokenization plays an important role in securing online and electronic commerce transactions, which are processed by PayNet's my debit switch. Sensitive account information such as the debit card 16-digit primary account number is replaced with a unique substitute identifier for online transactions. This protects sensitive information from theft and fraud, ensuring a secure checkout for cardholders. The Malaysian banking sector is expected to continue making provisions for impairments in 3Q amid the prevailing adverse economic conditions. Quoting BNM Governor Datuk Nor Shamsiah Muhammad Yunus, Bernama said the sector had begun to make provisions in 2Q as a preemptive measure in anticipation of a weaker credit outlook. Any further provisions will depend on the monitoring and assessment of the banks on their borrowers' performance. According to BNM's Financial Stability Review released in October, overall credit costs to banks could rise to 29 billion ringgit or 1.4% of total loans over 2020 and 2021. These projections were based on the conservative estimate of the share of loans under targeted repayment assistance. BNM's latest monthly statistical report showed the ratio of net impaired loan to net total loan 
stood at 0.85%, while ratio of total provisions to total loans stood at 1.5%. Nor Shamsia also reportedly noted that the agility and adaptability of consumers have improved over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic and that the impact of the outbreak therefore will not be as severe as before. Vijaya Corp founder and executive chairman Tan Sri Vincent Tan's plans to build a five-star hotel in the Icelandic capital of Reykjavik has hit a snag. The Iceland Monitor, citing a report by Morkun Blalit, said Tan plans to build a 150-room Four Seasons Hotel on the Milbaki Wharf by Reykjavik Harbour as well as apartments. It said Tan has secured 1.2 billion ringgit to fund the hotel. Iceland's Port Authority, however, argues that the proposed development goes far beyond current city planning and will encroach on its lot. Quoting an associated Icelandic port's spokesperson, the report said no agreement exists between Tan and Reykjavik Harbour and that a letter of dissent has been submitted to the planning officer of Reykjavik City late last month. Tan's representative in Iceland confirmed that the luxury hotel project has been approved and could begin operation in the first half of 2023. Last year, Tan told Morgan Blalit that he saw opportunities in the Icelandic hotel market to connect Iceland and Asia. He became a 75% stakeholder of Iceland Air Hotels in January this year.